Hey guys, I'm in Singapore. Hey guys, Tatiana and I made it to Singapore. We're gonna be here for the next few days for business. And today we decided to check out the zoo. Um, so we're at the Singapore Zoo, which is one of the best zoos in the world. I'm wearing my tiger hat, my Gucci tiger hat, because I might see some tigers here. Um, but we've already done some shopping on Orchid Road, which is one of the most famous uh, shopping streets in all of Asia. Amazing, had a lot of fun there. Uh, we're a little bit jet lagged too, because we came from Barcelona and uh, there's quite a bit of a time difference, but we're gonna spend the next few days doing some business, but also trying to explore Singapore, see what it has to offer, have a, a lot of fun too. So we're gonna share with you guys our vlog, and today we're at the zoo, so it's gonna be a lot of fun. It's one of the top zoos in the world. Um, they really have high standards of how they treat the animals here. They rescue animals, they try to preserve the animals. They do a lot of good for the animals here, which is uh, very important when you go and visit a zoo you wanna make sure that it's aligned with uh, some important values. So uh, we're gonna share with you guys what we see and what we experience. So the zoo here, they aim to protect the animals here. So they help to save threatened species and their habitat, engage and benefit local communities, mitigate human animal conflicts, rescue, rehabilitate and release or translocate displaced animals. So we just saw the white tigers and they were so beautiful and majestic. And what's really sad is that a number of years ago, there was over 100,000 tigers, and now they're becoming endangered. This now today, around 3,000 of them or so. And so, um, you know, zoos like this, they try to preserve them and to breed them, um, but a lot of them are hunted for sports, for status symbols. Um, you know, their body parts are used um, for different products, and so it's really sad to hear and see that and um, it's, it's really amazing though to, to learn about them and to really appreciate the beauty of these tigers. So there's actually no white tigers left in the wild today. So Bengal tigers, you don't find them in the wild. And so they try to conserve them through zoos and whatnot and try to breed them so that we can keep them around for as long as possible. So white tigers are Bengal tigers that have a very unusual gene that allows them to be white. Most tigers, as you know, are orange, and uh, they have blue or green eyes. So the white rhino was on the brink of extinction. So in 1895, there were fewer than 100 white rhinos left in the, world, in the wild. And then after a century of successful conservation and protection, they have made a comeback. And today there's only over 20,000 white rhinos live in park reserves and zoos. So that's a great success story. Hey guys, so now we're at Gardens by the Bay, which is an enormous 101 acre nature park here in Singapore. Uh, it's one of the top attractions here. It's incredibly beautiful and gorgeous. Um, they have different domes and uh, the skywalk behind me, you can't really see it, but we're gonna uh, go on that. And they light all this up in the evening time that you guys will see in a little bit, which is uh, pretty amazing. So uh, we're gonna spend it a, a few hours walking around enjoying the natural beauty around us. So right here behind me is Marina Bay Sands, which is one of the top hotels here in Singapore. There's an amazing pool on the top of it. Um, and of course it's got amazing views. Right now we're on the Skyway and uh, kind of high up, 50 meters up, but um, really beautiful here right now. Walking around on this Skyway on top of these super trees. So these super trees are about 50 meters high and they all light up in the evening time and it's gonna be an amazing light show. So now we're in the flower dome, which is a huge dome filled with thousands and thousands of different plants, flowers, tons of different species as you guys can see which is pretty beautiful pretty amazing so 
so these rocks or crystals are found in caves and they take thousands and thousands of years to develop. So what's really fascinating is uh, in caves, water that drips and drops from the caves leave calcium, okay? And they form these icicles over thousands of years. It can actually take thousands of years just to form one centimeter uh, of one of these rocks or icicles. So it says here they're rock icicles, water dripping from the cave roof leaves behind minerals that crystallize. And over thousands of years, these deposits form into an icicle shape called a stalis stalistite. This all happens so slowly that a stalistite might take thousands of years to grow a mere centimeter. So these here are thousands of years old. It's pretty amazing how that works over a long period of time. So some people might celebrate a 100th birthday. Ancient trees might approach an age of 5,000, but rocks can count the years in the millions, and the Earth itself has been around for over 4.6 billion years. So this is pretty fascinating to show you guys the evolution of life. So if the planet Earth is 4.6 billion years old, then uh, around 4.6 billion years ago to 542 million years ago, there were single-celled life forms, okay? That then evolved from 542 to 488 million years ago to soft body life forms in the oceans, okay? 542 to 488 million years ago, there's hard-shelled life forms in oceans, so this is when early algae develops. Then we got 488 to 444 million years ago, that's when animals with backbones appear in the sea, the first land plants, uh, which were liverworts, develop. Then we got 444 to 416 million years ago, uh, Kicksonian plants widely seen on land. And then we got 416 to 359 million years ago, which was the age of fishes. So this sees the ancestors of ferns, horsetails, and club mosses colonizing the land. Then we got the great age of plants, Tall evergreen forests and swamps of giant fern-like trees are inhabited by giant insects. Now we've got uh, 299 to 251 million years ago, uh, which is the Carboniferous ends in mass extinction. Only the therap therapsids, which would give rise to dinosaurs, survived. So now we're getting into the dinosaurs. Uh, rise of dinosaurs, forest full of ferns, uh, cycids, and conifers. Now we're into the Jurassic era. Okay, biodiversity of dinosaurs and other species increased. That was about 200 to 146 million years ago. Now we've got flowering plants spread across with insects and vertebra uh, vertebrates that pollinate flowers and disperse seeds. Dinosaurs suffer mass extinction at the end of this period. Okay, it's pretty old here. But here we come down to the age of mammals, uh, which was 65 to 1.8 million years ago. And here we are when human impact upon the world increases, which is 1.8 million years ago to today. So amazing all that history, guys, well before human life and just the evolution of it. I mean, just from 4.6 billion years ago to 542 million years, so just billions and billions of years, it was just single-celled life forms before it finally evolved into different forms of life. So I've now been in Singapore for a few days and I want to share with you guys a little bit about my experience and overall impressions being here. One thing that really impressed me is just how green Singapore is. Uh, it's known as the Garden City. From the moment that you arrive in the airport, which by the way is one of the top airports in the world, um, it's my first time in Singapore but 
Um, Tatiana and I, about two years ago, flying back from Thailand, I think, Thailand or Bali, uh, we had to stop in the Singapore airport for a layover for a few hours. And just by being in that airport, it was one of the best airports that I've ever been to. Um, the airport, it's hard to describe, it's just amazing, just the, the decoration of it, the, the, the plants and the greenery and everything just in the airport alone will leave a lasting impression on you. And uh, when I first experienced the airport for a few hours a number of years ago, I was like, you know, I've got to come to Singapore one day. And so here we are two years later. Um, so the airport leaves that impression and you really get a feel of what Singapore is about just being in the airport. Um, but, you know, taking a taxi from the airport to our hotel, you know, driving along the roads, I mean, you're seeing flowers along the roads and trees and greenery and plants and it's really beautiful. And then what's even more impressive is actually being here in the city, which typically, you know, when you go to a city, there's a lot of buildings and cars and whatnot. And, and you know, you see that here just like any other city, but it's really impressive how much greenery that they have. I mean, right now I'm just sitting off the side of the road, but you can see, you know, trees and plants everywhere. Um, you know, every corner, every street, there's trees and plants everywhere. And when Tatiana and I, we visited Garden by the Bay yesterday, last night, uh, which is an incredible nature park. It's 101 acres. They have the cloud forest dome. They've got the flower dome, uh, the super grove trees, um, all the different videos I've shared with you guys so far. Um, I mean, just being there in that garden, that nature park is pretty amazing, but we spent quite a bit of time uh, going through uh, one of the domes and it really explained their initiative and their values about how they feel how important nature is. Um, a big part of it is global warming and um, you know wanting to make sure that they are taking initiative and being very progressive with uh, acting against global warming and making sure that they're taking good care of the planet and nature. One thing that they shared that really touched my heart is how they um, believe that you know the young generation the kids by them growing up in a city with so much nature around them they learn to appreciate it and value it and when you learn to appreciate and value nature at a young age then you're gonna value the planet and you're gonna take better care of the planet and um, you know I think that's just really incredible how much they believe in that because a lot of cities they don't take that same uh, initiative in doing so um, that's why they call Singapore the Garden City, um, just because it's like a city that's in a massive garden. Um, anyways, that's one thing that really impressed me, really touched my heart. I actually got emotional when I was at the Garden by the Bay because it shared a lot behind global warming and how fossil fuels and pollution from you know vehicles and cars and all that sort of the plastics in the ocean, all of that, how much we're destroying the planet. There's been five known uh, mass extinctions throughout history and a lot of scientists believe that right now we're creating the sixth extinction uh, right now by destroying the planet so that got me really emotional got me really sad and you know got me motivated to actually be more proactive um, by taking the best actions that I can personally take to take better care of the planet you know recycling and not using straws and saving electricity you know, even saving water, all these things are very important. You know, maybe getting an electric car and, you know, I, I'm really impressed what Elon Musk is doing right now with Tesla and solar, uh, solar energy and whatnot. So anyways, that's one thing that really impressed me a lot. The second impression that I had uh, since we stayed on Orchard, Ro uh, Orchard Road, which is a famous, the, uh, Asia's most famous shopping street, over two kilometers of stores, shops, malls, uh, Tatiana and I, we've been really enjoying shopping when we travel. We like to always especially check out stores like Louis Vuitton and Gucci and Dolce & Gabbana and, and um, you know, we buy different things from those stores, but we also just like to experience it and see, you know, what they have available because there's certain items that are more rare than others that certain locations don't have. And uh, usually most cities, they have one Louis Vuitton or one Gucci. On this one road, there's three of them. Okay, um, and I didn't know that. We went to one and we're like, oh, this is where the Louis Vuitton is, the Gucci, this is like the luxury shopping area. And then literally a few blocks down, there's another luxury shopping area 
with all the same stores and then you go even more a few blocks down and there's even more and so uh, I've learned that uh, shopping is amazing here there's a lot uh, for example the Louis Vuitton they have at um, uh, Marina Bay Sands which is Marina Bay Sands is like that famous hotel with uh, three I think it's got three pillars and then at the top it's got an infinity infinity pool which is pretty famous but they have these shops like a mall that's basically connected to it and um, you know inside there there's tons of luxury shops as well so inside there I've saw I've seen probably the biggest Louis Vuitton store that I've ever seen I thought the biggest one that I've ever seen was in Dubai Dubai Mall which is like the biggest mall in the world it's even bigger here um, so that uh, was pretty pretty crazy seeing all the shopping and uh, it's pretty fun uh, walking around at different shops and everything. Definitely gonna have to come back here for shopping. Uh, Tatiana and I, we only got so much room available in our suitcases, so when we do buy stuff, you know, we try to make sure there are items that we really want and need, they're really quality items. Rather than just buying a lot of stuff, I prefer to have more quality stuff and fewer stuff and being a little bit more simplified when it comes to that. Uh, another thing that really impressed me is just how nice everybody is. Um, you know, everybody here pretty much speaks English, even though the, you know, there's a lot of uh, immigrants here, mostly from China, but majority of everything is in English. All the signage, uh, I mean, it's very westernized, uh, but overall people are really nice, really generous, uh, very friendly. Um, you know, I find that oftentimes with the Asian culture too, they're just very accommodating, very nice and polite. Uh, it's very clean here. Singapore is known for having a lot of rules and there's no, hardly any crime because they have such strict rules when it comes to punishment. Um, so even for example, you know, everywhere on the streets are clean, like nearly spotless. Uh, they actually have a law or a rule where you can't even chew gum. Uh, so nobody chews gum. You don't see on the sidewalks any gum that you might see in other cities. Uh, just, I, I feel like, because everybody, uh, it's like a value here to, you know, people don't litter or they don't, you know, they're, they're very clean just because they value the city so much. They value the greenery and, and everything. And I think, you know, just being a part of this culture uh, teaches you that. And so people treat the environment a lot better. Um, so very clean, uh, very organized, uh, hardly any crime, which is great very safe um, great food amazing restaurants they have a lot of celebrity chefs here a lot of celebrity restaurants a few that we checked out uh, what else a lot of money here a lot of money for sure a lot of wealth um, is known as one of the top banking countries in the world um, that's one of the reasons why I set up a company here in Singapore and set up my bank accounts and everything. It's one of the best offshore and just countries in general, better banks than Canada, better banks than the United States, for sure. Uh, so Singapore is one of the top places to do business. One of the best international banks and international banking uh, investing, uh, to do international investing as well, which is another one of the reasons why I set up a, a business here also. Uh, but uh, you can tell just from you know the luxury shops and hotels and whatnot that there's a lot of people here that have a lot of money and I've been to a lot of countries like this, like Dubai and Monaco, and it's always inspiring and humbling. It always motivates me. Uh, I love being around these environments because I remember, you know, the first time I, I traveled uh, to certain locations and I didn't have money, and I'd go into stores or hotels and I couldn't afford it at all, and I'd be around all these other people, and I'd be like, well, these are just regular people that are able to afford these things. And I'd always say to myself, you know, one day I'm gonna do well enough that I can be the kind of person that can experience the best of what life has to offer. And that's one thing that always inspires me is when I travel, you know, being for example at Garden by the Bay or going to these nice restaurants or these nice clothing stores like Louis Vuitton or Gucci or Dolce Gabbana, yeah, it's very expensive. These are luxury items, luxury experiences that not everybody gets to experience. But you know, for me, I don't wanna, you know, we only get one chance through this life and I wanna experience it to the fullest. And what inspires me is that human beings that have committed themselves to mastering their craft, 
to you know creating an amazing experience of a restaurant and the best ingredients and creativity everything that went into that the best of what a human being is capable of that money which for me is just a tool can allow me to experience the best of that person's creativity imagination commitment hard work and be able to taste things that I wouldn't normally be able to taste or experience is pretty amazing it's pretty inspiring being by Garden of the Bay and uh, seeing the light show that's someone's creativity someone's vision that was actualized that I get to experience that's that's a blessing uh, you know seeing this incredible architecture or, or, or hotels or you know buying a luxury handbag or clothing or whatever it is someone took their vision and turn it to a reality and yeah it costs a lot of money but you're gonna get the best of the best so that's what money provides and that's what inspires me as being in these environments I want to experience the best of what life has to offer not just uh, materialistic type of uh, things but experiences whether that be hotels or food or uh, you know different attractions why not you know why not be able to experience what life has to offer I don't want to end my life and come to the end and, and, and feel like that I've missed out and have regrets because I had this chance on this planet but I didn't experience it fully. I want the max experience of life and uh, money is what can allow you to amplify life and and uh, create different colors from it and different experiences that you wouldn't normally be able to experience uh, which is pretty remarkable and amazing. So I feel very blessed for that and uh, instead of getting down um, you know, like a lot of people do, oh, I can't afford this, too expensive. They complain about that, but why not do something about it? Why not change your mindset instead? Think, how can I add enough value to other people's lives and become more valuable so that I can uh, receive money in, in, in return for that? And that money can then allow me to be able to experience these things and buy whatever it is that I want. Anything you can have if you work hard enough for it. If you add enough value, if you become more valuable, and for me, that's the game of it. That's the enjoyment of it. Is it challenges me to become more and to give more, and therefore allows me to be able to be able to experience more as well. So I'm always motivated being in these environments. There's always new levels to experience and grow to that can allow me to experience more of what life has to offer. And you know, more and more of these people are going to create more incredible things that I want to be able to experience. Uh, as much as I possibly can in my lifetime. So it's been great being here and uh, that's my overall, overall experience and impression, but I look forward to coming back soon. We're off to Amsterdam next. Um, and uh, yeah, we didn't get enough time here, but I definitely come back when I'm on this side of the world another time.